Hey everybody, John Wagnon here with Dev Central. We're coming to you with another Lightboard lesson video, and today we're going to talk about the TLS handshake. And we actually did this uh, a while back as a Whiteboard Wednesday video, but we wanted to bring this experience to you on the Lightboard. And so, uh, so we're going to go over kind of the same basic idea, but uh, but do it on the Lightboard. And so. Uh, a lot of applications today use HTTPS, use encryption, you know, between client and server. And so, um, so it's important to know how that whole encryption begins and is established and all that stuff. And that's what the TLS handshake is all about. And so to kind of take a step back really quick, um, the, the, the predominant idea behind this is that the client needs to talk to the server in a secure manner and they need to encrypt that communication. Well, for encryption, you have to have an encryption key that encrypts all the data. And, uh, you know, if you go way back into way old school, um, you would have a, an encryption key that would have to be passed around, you know, between maybe you'd have a courier that would like drive it down the road or put it on a ship and, you know, ship it across the ocean or whatever. But nonetheless, both parties had to have the encryption key. This is for symmetric encryption in order to encrypt and decrypt. And so, um, so today that's not very viable. So we needed a way to say, let's, let's share keys back and forth uh, so that the client and the server can both have a symmetric encryption key uh, because symmetric encryption is a lot more efficient. It's a lot faster than asymmetric encryption. But nonetheless, we've got to be able to share that key. They both need to have the same key. So that's where this whole handshake comes in and it establishes the encrypted communication between client and server. So I'm going to draw kind of a waterfall effect here between a client and then I'm going to put a big IP right here. So big IP. Alrighty, so if you have a client, maybe this is your web browser, you know, Google Chrome or, you know, Safari or Firefox, whatever it is. You have a client that wants to establish a connection with a server, and in this case, the Big IP, which, by the way, on the Big IP, this is a this would be a client side connection. You could also have a server side connection, uh, TLS handshake from the Big IP to like a back end server, but we'll just look at the front end on this one. Um, uh, so you've got a client that wants to establish secure communication with the Big IP, and the first thing that happens is the client sends what's called a hello message. So it's a client hello. And that includes several things like maybe the version number of the uh, protocol that you're using, like TLS version 1.2 or maybe, maybe 1.3, whatever it is. Uh, another thing that's going to be included in that is the cipher suite that this client can support. And so if you have a pretty modern browser that's up to date, whatever, maybe it can support some pretty sophisticated encryption you know, uh, types or, or uh, cipher suites. And so it's going to let the server know, hey, these are all the different cipher suites that I can support. And then on the big IP side, the big IP is going to say, hey, these are all the cipher suites that I, as a web server then, am going to support as well. That's why it's really important to, uh, to establish um, the order of precedence on the cipher suites on your big IP. Uh, because if a client comes in and says, hey, I only want like this really low level, like really, really basic, maybe not very secure encryption, um, it comes in and the big IP, if you want to, if you want to be able to support that, uh, you've got to, you've got to configure that on the big IP, or maybe there are certain cipher suites that are so outdated or so full of vulnerabilities that you don't want to support them. You've got to make sure that you exclude those on the big IP. But nonetheless, uh, the, the client sends the hello It includes the cipher suites that are supported. The big IP gets to choose, uh, the cipher suite that is going to be used in this whole, uh, communication, this whole handshake. And so that gets sent. So once the big IP uh, gets that, they choose the cipher suite based on the available cipher suites from the client. Then the big IP is then going to send a server hello. So that's a hello as well back to the client. And then it's also uh, along with that going to send the certificate um, that that web server is going to have a, you know, a, attached to it that this client is wanting to access. And so the certificate includes a lot of different things. Uh, in fact, we can link to this video. We've got some, uh, some other content that tells you what's in a certificate uh, on a secure web server. But one of the key things that's in the certificate is the public key uh, for the server. And this goes back to that asymmetric encryption I was talking about um, that needs to happen in order to get you ultimately to the symmetric encryption that, that, that ultimately takes place for the bulk encryption. All right. But the certificate is sent from the server back to the client. The certificate includes, I'll put it right here, public key, 
Um, and then that's important because the client can then use that public key to encrypt things and send it back to the server, and then the server is going to be is will be able to decrypt things using the private key that it has uh, in order to decrypt things that were encrypted with the public key. All right, so when it sends a certificate back, the client actually checks that certificate for validity. It makes sure that the, that the certificate is not revoked, that it's a good certificate, all those kinds of things. And once that's good, then, uh, then it knows, hey, we're, we're dealing with a good, valid certificate here. After the server sends that, it also sends a uh, server, um, or a, I'm sorry, a hello done message. So the hello portion of this whole communication is now done. And then at that point, the client has the public key, and then, it's, and then it does what's, uh, what's called a, I'm going to call it a pre-master uh, secret. It generates that based on some of the values of the public key, and it, and it generates that, pre, what I'll call a pre-master secret. It generates that, and then it encrypts that with the public key, and it sends that back to the server, and it sends that back on what we'll call a key exchange. So I'll put key exchange right there. And then on the key exchange, that includes this pre-master secret that has been uh, encrypted with the public key. And then the big IP, or the server in this case, is going to uh, also get, is obviously going to, uh, to receive that pre-master secret. So pre-master pre -master secret over here. And because that was encrypted with the public key, remember the server has the private key, so it can decrypt that. And when it decrypts that, it also has the pre-master secret. So now they're looking at that, and they both have the same thing. Based on that pre-master secret, they both go through a series of calculations, and they generate what's now, what's now the symmetric encryption key that's going to be used to encrypt everything from that point forward. And so after the client sends that key exchange information with the pre-master secret that's been encrypted with the public key, then it's going to send another message uh, that says client finished. So I'll put client finished here. All right, so the client part is finished. And then the, uh, and then the server then is also going to generate that symmetric key. Um, and so it is going to send a message back. And it's, uh, it's called change cipher spec is what, that's a spec right there. So the big IP sends that back. Uh, change cipher spec, which by the way, this is also, I'll, I'll put change cipher spec here as well, because essentially what is happening in this key exchange is that the client is saying, hey, I've, I have uh, encrypted what I'm calling my pre-master secret. I'm going to send it over to you. As I'm doing that, I'm also going to generate now what's, what is going to be, I'll put the symmetric key right here, symmetric key that it has now generated, and that's going to be the key that's used to encrypt all of the future bulk encryption information that goes on after all this stuff is done. All right, so the key exchange information, chain cipher spec, the, uh, the big IP also um, generates this, what would be the same symmetric key because it is, this symmetric key is based on the pre-master secret that was generated before. So it uh, creates the same symmetric key, uh, so I'll just put that over here. And because it's a uh, symmetric key, and because that's based on that pre-master secret, they can both calculate the exact same symmetric key. Uh, so now they've both calculated the same symmetric key. Change cipher spec is sent back to the client. And basically what the change cipher spec is, is that is each of these two telling the other, hey, I am changing now from, from the asymmetric uh, encryption now over to the symmetric encryption. That way when we do the bulk encryption, it's going to be more efficient and we're going to use symmetric encryption for the bulk encryption. Alrighty, so now that they both got the symmetric key calculated, change cipher spec, so now the, now the uh, server, the big IP, has told the client, I am now changing over to symmetric encryption as well. Then it sends a finished message, a server finished message. It's not very good penmanship, I apologize. And then, after that, I'll just put kind of a line right here, and this is the, uh, this is the data uh, that's encrypted. I'll draw like a little lock right here. It's encrypted. This is like the bulk uh, encryption. Um, alrighty, so, and this is data encrypted with the symmetric key that now both of them have generated, um, you know, based on all this different stuff that we've talked about. So, essentially, again, what happens is the client sends a hello message to the server. 
the server sends back the public key information, the certificate, all that kind of stuff. And then ultimately they go through this uh, asymmetric key exchange, um, you know, uh, iterations of, of actions in order to ultimately get down to symmetric bulk encryption. And it's interesting because if you look at the actual cipher suite that would be offered up by the client or offered up by the server, or ultimately, like, like I said, it's chosen at the server level. If you look at that, it's got a bunch of stuff like maybe RSA, um, you know, SHA, which, which gets into like some secure hashing, like hashing algorithms, RSA or like elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman. Some of the RSA or elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman is dealing with this whole key exchange portion of the handshake. But then if you look beyond that in the cipher suite, you'll see stuff like AES, uh, maybe like AES GCM, like which is a, which is a, a counter, it's a, it's a mode of AES. Um, and it's got the key strength and all that. So but the reason that you have all those different parts of the cipher suite is part of it deals with the key exchange portion, and then the other part deals with the bulk data symmetric encryption down here. So like this down here is gonna be AES, for example, while all this stuff up here may be like, you know, either RSA or maybe um, uh, Diffie-Hellman elliptic curve, um, you know, something like that. And so that's why you have kind of two of those. So if you ever look at that cipher suite and you wonder what is all this stuff, uh, that's, that's what it is. Uh, we've, got some other, we've got some other content that explains that in a little more detail as well. We can, uh, we can link to it. All right, so hopefully you've, uh, you've learned a couple of things about how the client establishes communication with the server in, in the context of a TLS handshake. This stuff happens all the time. It's extremely expensive computationally. Um, that's why the, the big IP is, um, is such a good thing to have because F5, the F5 big IP just excels in this stuff. It does a really, really great job uh, making sure all this stuff happens really, really quickly. Um, so anyway, so thanks for joining us today. Hopefully you've learned a couple things about TLS and handshakes and we'll see you guys out there in the community.